A fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty hi yo silver, the Lone Ranger. In the early days of the western United States, gun law ruled the frontier. The local sheriffs were unable to preserve order, and might made right. It was then that the masked rider of the plains started his great fight for justice. And in time, his courage and resourcefulness, his strength and daring brought law and order, peace and security to the new territory. It was he, more than any other man, who made the winning of the West possible. Return with us now those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoof beats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver! We're heading west! Have the waiting on the trail ahead! Hello, Silver! Away! From Cooperstown to Washoe City, the trail used by the coaches of the Transcontinental Stage and Express Company followed the edge of a cliff. Mountains rose on one side, a deep canyon yawned at the other. For ages, the granite of the mountain had been crumbling. And one day, a masked man and an Indian following the trail made a startling discovery. Now, look ahead there. Uh-huh. Me see him. Oh, 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 oh. Oh. No more travel will follow this trail, Kimasabi. Oh, what happened? This was done by a landslide. It must have been. Look, the trail's been torn away as far as you can see. Uh-huh. Miles of it gone. Back to Cooperstown for us, Kimasabi. We'll head off anyone coming this way. Back, children. Get him back. back. Get him back. Now on, Tato. The only road between Cooperstown and Warshaw City will be by way of Gold Flats and the Valley Trail. Mm, that's right. Come on, Get him up, Scout. Hello, Silver. How are you? The Lone Ranger's discovery had results that no one anticipated. It was a week later that two angry men faced each other in a small office in Cooperstown. A third tried in vain to stop their argument. Plumber, you're a fool. I hear you say it. You try to buck Transcontinental and you'll get nowhere. What chance is a two-bit outfit like yours against us? We'll make out, and threats don't scare us. So they call you Black Bart, huh? You're division manager. You're the big man with a big company. You're the hombre that said he runs this part of the country. Well, don't make a mistake. You can't run me. Why, you... Gentlemen, please, gentlemen. You've heard her, Mr. Crocker. You've heard what he's been saying. Well, I... Ah, Crocker, look here. Transcontinental's got the franchise to haul the mails all the way from St. Louis to San Francisco. Ain't that so? It is, but then... How come then this young squirt has got a right to say we can't carry mail between here and Washoe City? Because the government promised my outfit the franchise between Gold Flats and Cooperstown if we get service started by the first of the month. You was going to Washoe City by the Canyon Trail... Well, that's wiped out. From now on, you'll have to take the Valley Trail through Gold Flats. But if we get that franchise, you can't carry one ounce of mail to Gold Flats less than you get our permission, which same you're not going to get. Sell out for 5,000? No, and not for 50,000. You ain't started service yet. That franchise ain't yours. We'll start in time. 
I've got stations built, wells dug, hay and provisions in. I got the stages and I got men. I got horses, mules, and gear. Mister, don't make no mistake. I got me a stage line. Crocker. Yes? I'm a fair man. I'll admit Plummer here has got some kind of an argument. But ain't it the fact that when you fellas promised him a franchise, it was cause you figured his line would just be a feeder to ours? Mm, that was the situation at the time, of course. And what's fair in that to Transcontinental when we got to make the Gold Flats Trail part of our main line? Bart, the fact that conditions have changed doesn't excuse my department from keeping the terms of its agreement. There's no use discussing this further. If Jim starts service by the first, the franchise is his. If not, then, of course, Transcontinental and Pacific will no doubt receive the franchise instead. A uh, fine thing. Plummer, I think I mentioned before that you're a fool. I haven't forgot. I happen to know things. For one, you borrowed right heavy to get organized, didn't you? If Bank of Dowd isn't worried by it, you needn't be. If I got the straight of it, them no tea holes are payable on demand. Is that supposed to mean something to me? That another one of your threats? Oh, I ain't threatening. And that reminds me. I always heard stages call for drivers. You ever heard different? Thanks for mentioning it. That explains some things. <laughs> yeah? I've hired hostlers and station tenders and others I'll be needing. But funny thing, every driver I've tried to hire has had something else in mind he'd rather do. I suspicion you might have had a hand in that, but I was never sure before. <laughs> Transcontinental plays for keeps. Oh, I've played other games beside Penny Andy. Better not. Penny Andy's just about your size. Shucks, even when I was just a button, I was never afraid to square up to the big boy. You got licked, I bet you. Mm, on occasion. Not always, though. Well, you won't get no franchise unless you have a stage and go fast by the first of the month. You won't get no stage there unless you hire a driver. There ain't any wants your pay. <laughs> so I reckon this is one of them occasions when you'll get licked. I reckon. Jim! Here's a word for you, Jim. Just come. Your ma sent me down with it. Hope it ain't bad news. I don't reckon it's good. Huh? Who's this hombre? Yes, this is Happy Joe Monk. We call him Happy because uh, he ain't. Who's the letter from, Happy? Wild Bill Riley. What's that? <laughs> that fetched you, huh? What dealings would Wild Bill have with you? <laughs> well, I'll read what he has to say, and maybe I'll tell you. Wild Bill Riley? The name seems familiar. Well, it ought to be. He's been working for Wells Fargo, driving. But he ain't no common, ordinary driver. He's something special. That gent can take six horses and make leaders, swings, and wheelers behave like they were circus trained. Talk about your famous drivers... There's the one that tops them all. What's he wrote you? Oh, just a second. Says he can't oblige you, huh, Jim? Don't be so doggone cheerful, Happy. Anyhow, you're wrong. Gents, Wild Bill says as how he'd like to have the honor of driving my first stage in the Gold Flats. Happy for once, you're a messenger of joy. What, what would he want to work for you? <laughs> Maybe he recollects the time you fired him when he was working for Transcontinental and you was agent on the Prairie Division. <laughs> he never did have much use for you, Bart, after that. He don't dare go again, me. Don't you wish he didn't? He won't get the stage through. I got cash, says he will. You sell out. And you go to blazes. Come on, Happy. We have to tell the boys about this. See you later, Mr. Crocker. Glad you're in luck, Jim. All right, mister. I'm giving you a warning. Go right ahead. Transcontinentals have fights of four, and that's always one. You don't say. Well, my gold flat stage line is just beginning, so it ain't never had a fight. But on account of that, there's one thing you got to admit. Yeah? <laughs> We've never lost. Jim Plummer and Happy Joe, whose long, mournful features both contradicted and explained his nickname, lost no time in circulating Jim's good news. But Black Bart had also been busy, and when Jim finally reached home, he found that a caller had arrived before him. And another thing, you little measly, sawed-off shrimp. Ma! I finally decided to come home. It's about time. This here dried up wart that calls itself a banker. <laughs> oh, now, Ma. Howdy, Mr. Dowd. Ma ain't been scaring you, has she? I you I've just been giving him a piece of my mind. Seeing as how he ain't got too much of his own, I thought he could use it. Please, Mrs. Plummer, I'll handle I handle this, Ma. What's on your mind, Mr. Dowd? I, uh, he's Miss... got the infernal gumption to say he's going to call in the loan you made off him. Huh? Is that a fact? Hey, uh, now, Jim, it ain't because I'd well, like I'll to. Well, I'll be uh, switched. He's sure quick on the trigger. Huh? Black Bart Kruger. I uh, don't just follow you. Oh, shucks, Mr. Dowd. You don't have to pretend to me. I know Bart put you up to this. 
And I can give you a mighty good guess what he told you, too. But I Betty don't... hinted that if you was to call in my loan, knowing right well I haven't got the cash and you'd have to take over my equipment, well, then Transcontinental would be plumb bubbling over with appreciation. Now, ain't that so? He, uh, he just pointed out that uh, you can't possibly get that franchise. My boy uh, can do anything he's got a mind to. Oh, I didn't oh, mean to Don, say that. Oh, and you, Ma, you keep out of this. You're the worst fire eater I've ever seen. Somebody's got to stand up for all right. Oh, Mr. Dowd ain't going to insist on his cash. Well, I'm afraid that for the security of the bank... I said, I hold did... on. Now, open your ears and listen. Don't get so red in the face. You'll likely bust a blood vessel. Wait, this is And you're behaving like you ain't got the sense of a mule. Mr. Dowd, Black Bart and Transcontinental are just using you to get at me. Uh, I'm the best judge of that. You should be, but it's plain to see that you're not. You're a private banker. What can Transcontinental do for you? Oh, shucks. They're your competition. They're just like Adams and Wells Fargo. They got banks of their own. You do them this favor, and one day the time will come when you'll find them same fellas set on running you out of business. But I... I ain't through but... yet. Now what happens if you string along with me? In the first place, you get your loan paid off in cash, which is a heap better than taking equipment that nobody but me will have use for. In the second place, when my line gets to operating, it'll be doing business with your bank. You'll be making plenty out of us. Now, then, ain't that a sight more sensible than the sight of getting me with fellas that are your enemies, too? But, but you can't even get a driver for your stage. Can't, huh? <laughs> well, that's something Bart must have neglected to tell you on purpose. Uh, look here, Mr. Dowd. This is a letter from Wild Bill Riley. He's on his way to Cooperstown. He's going to drive for me. Why, I didn't know that. Well, you do Why, now. Jim, is that a fact? Is Wild Bill really going to drive? Well, you can read what he says for yourself. Great day. I'll bet Bart Kruger's fit to be tied. He'll have to be here by Friday. Bill should just about make it. If the stage doesn't start by Friday, it'll never reach Gold Flats by the first of the month. I know that. Well, I... Make up your mind. Side with Transcontinental if you want it that way. I can't stop you. But it'll sure be a fool play. I, uh, well, on second thought, perhaps the bank can wait a little longer for its money. <laughs> I thought it could. But if you don't get a course away by Friday, yeah? then I'll have to demand payment at once. Well, if a coach don't leave by then, I won't much care what happens after that. Well, that's all, then. Uh, good day. Don't you worry, none. I'm getting that franchise, and you'll be getting your cash. I hope so. <laughs> what was that, Verma? Banker Dowd, dried up old schemer. Son, I wouldn't trust that fellow no further than I can throw a year. Later. He can be trusted. He can as be. long as I can keep him convinced, he'll profit more by being for us than he will by turning the Guinness. Just so, but when he ain't convinced no longer, you watch out. Who's that? I don't know. Come in. You a Jim Plummer? That's me. I don't know you, do I? I understand you're looking for a stage driver. You one? I'll take the job. Stranger, uh, would you say your name was? I didn't say. Just what I thought. What's the matter, Mom? Don't you see it? Land sakes, are you blind? Huh? First it was Banker Dowd. Now it's this stranger. And if both of them wasn't sent here by Black Bart, then I miss my guess. Bart didn't send me. Hey, I just wonder. You want a driver or don't you? You know, mister, that'd be pretty slick of Bart to send a man to hire out to me that was working for him. I've told you, Bart didn't send me. Maybe he didn't. Or well, maybe he did. But in any case, I got me a driver, Wild Bill Riley. He's on his way to Cooperstown right now. I see. And if you are working for Bart Stranger, yes. then you can go back to him and say that all the crooked stunts he can try he ain't going to stop me. Friday, Bill's going to be on the box on one of my stages. Then you just watch his dust. That evening in the shadows at the rear of Transcontinental Stables, Black Bart Kruger gave final instructions to two mounted horsemen and... Slim. Yeah? You take orders from Abe here. He's a boss, Savvy. Uh-huh. Abe? Yeah? Bill Riley will most likely come by way Eagle Pass. Maybe he'll be along tonight. Maybe tomorrow night. We'll be watching. I'm leaving everything up to you. I don't care what way you do it. But just keep one thing in mind. Uh-huh. While Bill ain't to reach Cooperstown alive. Now get. Get up there, up there, Mark. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue our story. The following evening, the Lone Ranger and Tonto had just returned to their hidden camp and were preparing to remove the saddles from their horses when suddenly... Shot from the direction of the pass, Tonto. Uh, Cinch up again. We're riding. Tonto, do that. Steady, boy. The saddle will have to stay on, old fellow. There. Ready, Tonto? Uh, Me ready. Come on, get him up, Scott. Oh, Silver, away! Eagle Pass was close by, and Silver and Scott, obeying their masters, thundered toward it at full speed. As they neared the pass, the masked man shouted, Hold up, Tonto! Hold, Scout! Hold, 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 Silver! Hold, Scout. hold, boy, hold that! What? What you see? Here! Oh! Bring your canteen. Oh, me. Bring him. Oh. Hello there. You scared him off. What happened? Two fellas was laying for me. Almost got me. Would have if you hadn't come along. Your mask. And your Wild Bill Riley. Yeah. The canteen, Kimosabe. Oh, here. Here, canteen. Water. In just a moment. Now then, drink. More? A bit. That'll do for now. Lone Ranger. You know me? <laughs> Your horse, that mask, the engine. Shucks, I'd know you anyways. How do you feel? Think it's safe to move you? Wait. But we've got... No, to... no, hold on, stranger. Could you listen to me for a second? Of course. I recognized you. But you seem to know me, too. I know more than that, Bill. I also know why you were heading for Cooperstown. You'd promised Jim Plummer to drive the first stage to Gold Flats. And now... No, I can't. It'll be a long time before you hold a whip again, I'm afraid. If I ever do. Don't give up. I've been hit right bad. We'll see that you're taken care of. Sure. Sure, I know you will. Only that ain't what I got in my mind just now. No? Look, stranger. Black Bart's a crook. I've always sort of hankered to get after him. And that's out of the question now. Uh-huh. There's young Jim looking for me. Depending on me. Making a fight he ought to win. I know. Lone Ranger, I've always heard that... Well, that you're on the side of the folks that need it most. Tonto and I help where we can, Bill. Yeah. And now, here I am, out of the game. But I was wondering... Yes? If I could think you'd try to give Jim a hand... We're on his side. You mean you will help Jim? Yes. I don't know just how you... You can go about it. Don't worry, Bill. But I Rest know. easy. I have an idea right now. Later that night, Abe and Slim entered the busiest of the cafes in town and pushed their way through the crowd to where Black Bart sat alone. They drew up chairs, and when they had been served with drinks, gave their employer the story of what had happened that night. <laughs> So you got him, eh? He won't drive no stage. It would have been better if you'd have finished him off for good. Shucks, Bart, we never had the time. We hadn't hardly fired before we heard them horsemen coming. They must have been camped close by somewhere. But you didn't get to see who they was, Abe? Eh? We was hightailing. Well, just so you got Bill. I bet I hit him twice. And I know I hit him. It was one of my bullets knocked him out of the saddle. <laughs> There's Jim Plummer. Watch me have some fun. Yeah. Jim. Hi there, Jim. Yeah? <laughs> Sit down. What's your whistle, huh? Well, I reckon I won't. What do you want? Well, Jim, from the talk I've been hearing, seems as if though you're setting a lot of store on while Bill's showing up. He'll be here. Maybe he'll be here before the night's out. Yeah? <laughs> you don't know that hombre real well, do you? What are you getting at? Well, I mean, uh, you got a notion he's a fellow that can be depended on, ain't you? He can be. You uh, got confidence enough so you'd like to make a bet? On Bill driving? Yeah. I'm just so sure Bill will be sitting on the box of that coach come morning that I'll cover any amount you care to name. Now, I don't like to take your money on a sure thing. Put up or shut up. Well... You was bluffing. Bluffing? I got a hundred dollars that says wild Bill won't drive your stage. Done. In the meantime, however, the masked man and Tonto had removed wild Bill to their camp, where they made the wounded man comfortable. Then the Lone Ranger outlined his plan to Tonto. I'm going to do something I've never done before, Kimosabe. What, Pat? Assume another man's identity. Mm, me not savvy. I told you what happened when I spoke to Jim Plummer the other day. Uh -huh. 
He suspected I'd been sent to him by Black Bart. And I couldn't blame him for being suspicious of a stranger. He has too much at stake to allow anyone unknown to him to drive that stage. Mm, that's right. Bill is too badly wounded to be moved into town where he could vouch for me. Uh, him plenty sick. I could probably get Jim and bring him here, but tomorrow's Friday and the stage must start first thing in the morning if it's to reach Gold Flats by the first of the month. Uh, Trip to town, back here, then to town again would mean delaying the stage until late afternoon. Uh, what What you do? Tonto, I'm going to change clothes with Wild Bill. What's more, I'm going to assume his identity in every way. Talk like him. Use his mannerisms, his western speech. You need heap good disguise. Bill and I are about the same build. Wearing his clothes, I look still more like him. And it'll be up to you to disguise my face to resemble him. <laughs> Tonto, try, but it plenty hard. I got what information I could from Bill before he went to sleep. Uh. He's never been in Cooperstown. He worked for Transcontinental once. That was on the Prairie Division. He's met Jim Plummer just once or twice. The only man who knows him well, the only one I'd really have to fear, would be Black Bart. Maybe him find out. Not if I do it my way. And how that? Wait until the last minute before entering town. If I get there early, I'd have to mix with people. But if I arrive late, I can jump to the stage and drive off with no questions asked. Uh, who ride guard? A man they call Happy Joe, but he's never met Bill. Oh. Tonto, I've got a notion we're going to be able to put this across. How's that? <laughs> That heap good. Then the work, <laughs> you must have me. Get your materials and see what you can do. Early the following morning, a coach bearing the name of the Gold Flat stage line was rolled in front of the station. Then a few minutes later, six spirited horses were backed into their traces. A crowd had gathered to witness the start of this first run, and excitement ran high. One of the big companies going to let Jim get away with this. Well, Black Bart don't seem worried. Look at him standing there grinning. Where's the driver Jim said he was going to have? I don't see nobody. Hi, Jim. Where's Wild Bill? He'll be along. If he ain't broke a leg or something, be just our luck. Worst all this happens to us. Oh, cheer up, Happy. Bill gave his word. <laughs> uh, howdy, Jim. Oh, it's you, huh? <laughs> Where'd you go with the trouble? It's and them horses up for expect to go someplace? That stage is starting out today. Without no driving? Bill will show up. And if he don't? Then I'll drive the stage myself. <laughs> That'd be a good one. I admire to see that. Uh, just when did you ever drive a stage for? I could do it. Sure. You might even get the gold flats right side up someday. <laughs> but it sure as blaze wouldn't be by the first of the month. I'll bet it'd take you to them just to get as far as Paiute Springs. You just tend to your own affairs. Sure, that's what I'm doing. <laughs> I got $100 bet on what happens today. <laughs> well, that's it, hombre. Told you we'd lose our gym, recollect. Said all the time we was beat before we started. You ready to give up, Happy? Gosh, no. Reckon I'm so used to things going bad, don't make no difference to me no more. Jim, Jim, ain't you seen Wild Bill no place? I haven't, Ma. And ain't you been no word? Nothing, but... Oh, but he'll be along. I know blamed well he will. He'd better, young fella. Oh, good morning, Mr. Dowd. Well, what are you doing here, you old glue? I told you oh, that... you tell folks so many things. Well, I told you if this stage didn't get started this morning, I couldn't give you no more time on your loan. And I ain't changed my mind since I said it. We'll get started, Mr. Dowd. You just wait. Yeah, I'll wait. I'll wait another hour. But if your driver ain't put in an appearance by then, you and me stepping around to my bank. Don't look like the run will be me. Bet the coach don't never leave town. It's going to be mighty tough on Jim. I always said he couldn't fight Transcontinental. You're mighty strong. Just another hour and then Jim's licked. Come on, old fellow. Hurry, Silver. Come on. On the Cooper's town, boy. There's no time to waste. Hurry. Time passed, and still there was no sign of Wild Bill Riley. The crowd became convinced that Jim was beaten. Banker Dowd grimly consulted his watch, and Black Bart laughed openly. <laughs> About ready to pay off on that bet, Jim? I, uh, I ain't lost yet. Shucks. Now what's the sense of being stubborn? I warned you about Bill, and didn't I tell you you couldn't hope to go again my company? Say. Yeah? You've been certain right from the first that Bill wouldn't show up. Did you do something to keep him from coming here? Now, what put a fool notion like that in It'll be head? just like you. Careful. If you have... Making threats. If you have and I find a way to prove it on you, I'll pay you off. It's the last thing I do. <laughs> Try it and it will be. Hey, Jim. Uh, huh? Here comes Banker Dowd. Uh -huh. I know just what he's going to say. <laughs> I'm sure glad you put up that hundred with a barkeep. 
When Dowd gets through with you, you won't have a hundred left. Well, Jim, the hour's up. Now, wait, Mr. Dowd. I've waited longer than a short ride now. Oh, but you don't savvy. My driver will be here. I, I know he will. Well, no, he'll be too late. But Mr. Dowd, you've heard of Wild Bill Riley. You must have. There ain't a man nowhere that can make the time he can. He'll get the gold flats all right. Just, just wait a little longer. I won't argue with nope, you. Nope, and I ain't going to wait longer to collect on that bet. Come on. Tell your hustlers to unhit some horses. We'll step down to the cafe, collect the cash you owe me, <laughs> and I'll buy you a drink. I will. Jim. What? Who's that, who's that fellow running this way? Huh? Well, that's Wild Bill. What in? Oh, Jim, it's him. Here I come. I still don't think. By golly, Mr. Dowd, if you don't wait, I'll give you the licking of your life. Well, well, now, I suppose now that he's ready to that, leave. That can't be him. Be... It's him, all right. <laughs> and by thunder, here's where you pay off and I win the franchise. I'm getting aboard the bar. Bill! Hi, Bill, wait! There's no time, Jim. Right there, he's gonna start right off. Hold on! Get up, get up, man! There she goes! Off for Gold Flat. Look at Wild Bill handle them horses. Now Jim's got a chance. Hooray for Bill! Look at Happy hanging on to the seat. <laughs> Did you ever see anything like it? I don't see why he couldn't have waited just for a minute. He's smart, son. He knows how important time is, and he ain't wasting it. I suppose you're Where's right. Where's Abe? Where's Slim? I want to find them fellas. Not so doggone fast. I got to find them. <laughs> there he goes, and now you're paying me. I'll pay you. You bet you will. But I'll tell you something first. Yeah? I'll lay you another hundred. That hombre don't never get your stage as far as Paiute Springs. You're on, mister. Boys! If Wild Bill can't do it, then nobody can. The story you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.